Thank you. It's now July 28th, 6 o'clock at James Monroe. Um, roll call, please, Ms. Cluck. Mr. Schneider? Here. Mrs. Mattaker? Here. Mr. Shee? Mrs. Peng? Mrs. White? Here. Mr. Mohan Patel? Mr. Burrell Patel? Here. Mr. Rivera? Here. Dr. Haydock? Here. Six present. Thank you very much. Opening statement. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Edison Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted in the Board of Education administrative offices. Copies of these notices were sent to the Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger on January 4th and June 9th, 2022. The public may participate at regular meetings in accordance with the bylaws and the applicable state regulations. Um, at this time, we're going to um, move to a privileged session um, after the motion, but uh, just a little housekeeping. We'll be back there, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour and a half maybe, I would estimate. Um, if for some reason we have any delays, we'll be happy to come out here and apprise you of our updates. And with that said, Ms. Gluck. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Township of Edison, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public shall be excluded from discussion of and action upon the here and after specified subject matters. Attorney client privilege discussion regarding student matters, litigation brought by former employees and students, ETEA grievances, PERC, unfair labor practices, Lincoln addition, school business administrator candidates, personnel matters. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter shall be made public at such time as the need for non-disclosure no longer exists. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Do I have a motion to pass that resolution? Motion. 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 Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. For those who weren't here before, welcome here to James Monroe. Could I have a motion to reconvene to open session, please? Motion, motion. to reconvene. Motion, Mr. Shee. Second. Motion. Mr. Patel, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have a roll call, Ms. Cluck? Mr. Schneider? Here. Mrs. Mattaker? Here. Mr. Shee? Here. Mrs. Peng? Here. Mrs. White? Here. Mr. Mohan Patel? Present. Mr. Burrell Patel? Here. Mr. Rivera? Here. Dr. Haydock? Here. Nine present. Thank you so much. Um, and next on our agenda, we have an administrative review of resolutions. Dr. Bragan? Uh, thank you, Board President. If you look at the um, administrative resolutions, the first one up is a statement of assurances for high school voter registration for 22-23. The next up will be a re resolution for the appointment of our bond council. Next up is appointment of our financial advisory services. The next up is an appointment for business office consulting services. Next up is the appointment of the energy savings improvement program engineering services. We have a settlement resolution that we discussed in closed session. Under curriculum instruction, we have our traditional uh, field trips, professional development opportunities for staff in July, and our normal out-of-district placements that tends to get updated monthly with the changes in enrollment with our uh, students with special needs. And professional services for the year, those uh, professional services as related services are being approved, not necessarily going to be utilized, and we use those on an, on, on an as-needed basis. We'll turn it over, Mr. Board President, to Mrs. Gluck with the finance resolution. Thank you, Dr. Bragan. Uh, for finance, we have the approval of the minutes from the June meeting. We have the four board secretary's report and then the finance resolutions, which include uh, transfers, uh, bid results, um, the 1920 school nutrition program procurement review, um, the FCCLA grant, we have bid results from transportation. We have our cooperative bids for, our, for the 22-23 school year. We have the co-op 
uh, for um, Equalis Group. We also have the co-op for the UCESC. We have the results from the proposal for auditing services. Our non-public school aid, which includes uh, security, nursing, technology, and textbooks. Dual use classrooms, um, also the non-public also includes nursing services. Um, our insurance premiums, our change orders, um, obsolete items, and um, the normal uh, payment of claims, uh, our medical, and transportation report. Um, and then some rebids that we had to go out for, a boiler cleaning, boiler service and maintenance, building materials, and the school bus maintenance and repair services. And that concludes the finance. Thank you, Ms. Gluck. Board President, I have questions. Mr. Patel. Okay, so Dr. Bregan, can you please explain what is the appointment of a bond council? What, what, are, what, is, what are the roles? I see the law firm of Violence, Coleman and Spitzer. Why are we appointing a bond council? And what are they exactly going to do? The bond council would be our, you know, our legal representation anytime we enter in any kind of bond. As you know, we approved a few meetings ago to enter into an ESIP, and we appointed an ESCO, which is a company that oversees that. Those monies are bound, bonded, and you know we get basically akin to what a mortgage would be, and we use the savings from the energy savings from the ESIP to pay for that. So that's our legal counsel that has expertise in securing those bonds and what that would look like moving forward. Okay, so this, is this bond related to the infrastructure development plan, or is this related to ESIP plan? ESIP plan, but either that's what we have the dedicated for, but a bond council is a bond council. They could do any bonds that we come up with. Okay, so the appointment is for the whole year, um, and then whether we do the infrastructure or ESIP, this will be the firm for legal services? It would be a firm that we have appointed. If the board chose to have another firm do a different task, we could do that as well, but it gives them approval for us to use them over the course of this school year. That would be correct, Mr. Patel. Okay, uh, the next question I have is a resolution authorizing appointment for a certain Financial Advisory Services, uh, it says, the firm of Acacia Financial Group, Malton, New Jersey, will be retained to provide specialized financial, financial advisory services related to the bond referendum and the issuance of school bonds and other obligations. I need to know more about this part. Okay. Um, we had um, people put in for that, for the bond uh, financial services. Again, if we were gonna go out with a bond, you need someone to bid the bond, to put the bond together, to come up with what it, uh, the actual cost would be, what the interest rates would be, contact the banks and secure those. And there are firms that do that. The firm that we're looking to appoint today is Acacia Financial, who has expertise in that area. We actually brought one of their representatives to a uh, previous uh, finance committee meeting last year to discuss what those services would look like. and. Um, the, the firm that we're appointing here is well respected in the field and has done this in a number of different districts that I'm personally aware of. Board President, I have a few questions. Uh, uh, Mr. Biro Patel, go ahead. Um, so, um, it's again the bond. So I understand the violence is legal services, so I get that, that's okay. Uh, but this one, so if we issue a bond, uh, from the last committee of the whole meeting, my understanding is we are, we are running, we are very close to the amount of money that we already have, you know, comparing last year, next year, and the surplus reserves and everything um, for, for the capital budget and everything. So if we issue a bond, so if, do we plan to issue a bond? And that's the reason we are re retaining this firm or what's, what's, the, what's the action plan here? Why are we doing this now? Well, you, you can't have an ESIP without issuing the, the funding. So the ESIP basically takes, we budget annually close to $3 million for utilities. And the idea of an energy saving, savings investment plan is that a company is going to come in, do an investment grade audit, which we're in the process of having done. And when they do that audit, they come back to a recommendations. Example, hey, um, Ben Franklin Elementary School would really benefit from LED lighting. It would save your electrical costs in that building. I'm making up a number, $100,000 a year. You do that across, you know, 19 schools, you're going to save, you know, $1.9 million. So you would use that money to pay a bond to then get new boilers, to get new uh, infrastructure, maybe new HVAC units, or whatever that comes out to be. And the investment grade audit is going to get us that information that we come back to one of our committees 
and working with the ESCO company, we decide what that would be. We have a rough estimate of a uh, district of our size and what our annual utility cost would be, that that would be somewhere in the range of $14 million worth of equipment, whatever that transpires to be. Boilers, lighting, HVAC, whatever we can pay for which schools are the most in need. Well, you basically bond that $14 million for 20 years and you use the savings that it generates from your annual utility costs to pay for that. So in order to do that, you need a bond. So that's what we're talking about. This has nothing to do um, with any infrastructure plan or anything that we've discussed at the committee for the whole. Okay, great. So that clarifies one point. It has nothing to do with the infrastructure plan. So it's related to ESIP. So now ESIP, the DCU Energy will present us with all the measures. And then we'll look at the measures and then we'll decide on how we want to proceed based on the report, right? Correct. So at that point of time, to move forward with the actual work is when we need these bonds. And it's, uh, it's fine because we'll, uh, we'll, we'll decide depending on what the report is and what, what the details are. But at the same time, this is a self-funding program, so it's not a, an alarming thing for the people. So that's, that's the good news over there. Uh, yes. However, um, the appointment of the firm, this financial group, um, did DCU Energy, who is our ESIP uh, auditor right now, recommended this, or did we do an RFP? We did an RFP. Okay, so where are the results of the RFP? Uh, I don't have them off the top of my head. And do you have those readily available? Um, no, I have something to do. So we should get them. I don't have them readily available. Okay. If you want them, we could provide that to you. If you yes, need. I would like to have the results of the RFP. And um, this, this appointment, uh, how urgent is this? Does it have to be done today? Um, there's a timeliness to having all these, the bond council, the financial advisor, as well as the energy savings engineering done in a timely manner so it doesn't delay the ESIP process. The ESCO thought we were going to be able to approve these in June, but that, that we weren't able to bring that to fruition in that time. Okay. So is there a delay? Yeah, it would be a delay. Okay, all right, so we, we don't intend to delay any processes, but uh, I wish there was an RFP, and uh, I mean, results of the RFP. But at the same time, um, we, we have a scheduled budget planning and oversight committee meeting for 15th of August, where we are expecting uh, DCO to come in and discuss the results and provide a lot more details to us. And myself, Brian Rivera, and Jerry Shee are part of that committee. Mm -hmm. So this, this thing right here should have been discussed in the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee. We should have been able to discuss the bids, the RFP, because this is the appointment of financial advisory services. We are talking about a potential, I mean, I am assuming and understanding that that bond, the, the whole ECP is self-funding, but at the same time, we are talking about millions of dollars of year and the word bond, right? So it was very important for this thing to be evaluated in the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee. For this time, I. I personally, I will defer to other board members, but I personally am okay with this this time. But I would really request that all the financial uh, resolutions like this has to come in a budget planning and oversight committee, right? It has to be discussed with the budget planning and oversight committee so we compare and we make appropriate decisions. At the same time, it's very important because we have to be very mindful of the taxpayers' dollars here. The town does not like bond, referendum, and stuff like that. I uh, thank you for making it very clear, which is this for, because for a moment I thought we are issuing a referendum, but now it's much clearer. But at the same time, let's pick a point to bring everything in the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee. Okay. And I have another question regarding the same uh, EC program. Appointment of Energy Savings Program Engineering Services of Johnson & Urban of Colesnack, New Jersey, and uh, $11,000, and there are a bunch of rates. What are are they for? It's certainly related to ESIP, but what, what are they going to do? Yeah, they were, um, the ESCO company that we're using in DCO had recommended that we get a um, program engineer for the energy savings investment plan. And basically what they are is they are a third party engineering firm that reviews what DCO is going to put forth as their investment grade audit and verify what they're saying is accurate and in the best interest of the district. So we had um, a couple of firms we contacted about putting this information together and sending it to us. And that was the firm that provided it. And that they're the ones that came back for the RFP. And uh, their basic services, the investment grade audit, when it's done by DCO, 
they're a third party person who goes over it and makes sure it's, for lack of a better word, everything is aligned to what it should be and it's in the best interest of the district. Right, so is Johnson and Urban going to do um, third party review or are they going to do the actual work? What are they going to do? They are the third party review engineer. They are not doing the actual work. Okay, so what happened is when I looked at this agenda, I did a Google, I called my friends in the different districts and then I found out, oh, the Johnson and Urban and there is a third party review and I had to educate myself on the process. I had to do tremendous research last two days to go over the process. What would have been helpful is when myself, Jerry Shee, and Brian River, I would have met uh, in the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee and Doug or she, we would have joined. If all these things would have come at that time, along with the discussion of um, other ESIP thing, we all would have been very clear. I don't know if Jerry or Brian knows about this thing, and Doug, but uh, I, I, re I really think this should have been all discussed as a part of EC program and in the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee because EC program is millions of dollars of program. Now, it's a self-funding program. I'm very excited about it. But at the same time, I'm very concerned and we want to make sure we make 100% correct decisions for every single penny that is accounted for for the taxpayer. So let's, let's move forward very carefully on this, on all these items. I think I'm okay with all these three items today, but it's really concerning that it did not come to the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee. Just, just a point of clarification, Mr. Bedell. This was reviewed at the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee, and the presentation by DCO on two separate occasions went over this exact process. They didn't have the results of the RFPs, but it's not accurate to say that this wasn't discussed at that committee. It was, and the process was clearly delineated and shared what it would look like in the timeframes involved. It's in the PowerPoint that they provided. What they didn't provide was the actual firms that were gonna be awarded for the RFP, because it's not for them to do that, it's for this Board of Education. Right, no, I understand. So a lot of information was provided to us by DCO and we, we met several times. And that is the reason I precisely set up many meetings. So all of us are very well aware of this process okay. so that we make right decisions, right? But now we are getting into the numbers and hiring of the actual services of the actual firm. And we really want to dig deep into it and make sure the right firm is hired. Maybe th this, these are all rock stars. Maybe Johnson Urban is the best in the world, the cheapest one. Maybe uh, violence is the best one for the bond council, and maybe uh, Akashia is the best financial advisor. I mean, I've, if I were to make decision, I would probably also look into the community for a volunteer financial group. I don't know how feasible it is, but maybe there are rock stars in Edison Township who can provide those services. I don't know how it works legally, but all those things would have been discussed in the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee, and we would have really made decisions, because ACIP, from day one, every single thing, we had multiple meetings, and Someone may think it would be a waste of time, but we really, I, I personally felt very comfortable moving forward with the program and knowing each and every aspect of the program. And it's really beneficial for the district, but let's make a point to discuss everything in detail going forward. And if, if uh, anything comes up, please, we can also set up another urgent meeting if we need to for, for the committee, but it has to be come to the, all the financial item has to come to the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank I'm you, Mr. Patel. Patel. Well, President. Mr. Shi. Yeah, just uh, on the same line on the um, the um, appointment of the, the Energy Saving Improvement Program Engineering Services. Bernie, is this a part of that uh, total 21% of the uh, the cost, or this is additional cost uh, for the uh, ESIP program? You know, you don't want to talk about the 21%. I do. Right? I believe this is yeah. part of the entire cost. Okay. Thank you. I had one question, Dr. Bregan. Sure. This is about the. This is about the appointment of the business office consulting services. I'm seeing that we are gonna be paying $150 per hour. How many hours do we envision this person to be working? And what is this person gonna be doing or this group going to be doing? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a firm, but it's basically, basically one group, Frank Cerevello, who's a retired business administrator. I don't anticipate many hours to do this, but it's an opportunity to have somebody with expertise to help us in our time of transition until we find a uh, and secure a full-time you know, school business administrator. Um, we're doing a good job and we've been in this capacity, uh, Ms. Gluck and myself, for about a year. But uh, there are some things that you know, we need some assistance with and we think someone who's been an expert in the field over time and this person has proven to be that. Um, if you ask me hours, a couple hours a week at the most. 
And, and what about Summit? There was a group called Summit that we was also hired last year, right? Consulting when it was doing, um, you're paying $110,000, yeah. right? Summit we basically used to um, help reconcile some of our books last year in preparation for our audit and make sure the uh, accounts were all reconciled. Um, we did not approve them again this year. Okay, thank Just, you. Board President? Mr. Shi. Yeah, I just want to add a, a comment. So the, the bond council, um, you know, it's, it's not with doing, going, going out for issue of bond. The other thing is when uh, Dr. Bragan presented the phase one of the plan, uh, we need to go out to a, um, what's the word, um, lease purchase. Lease purchase is the same thing. You go out, you borrow money, and the bond council will help us to get the, the best rate. You're going to go out and you know, put our things there, put out for bids, so company will come in bid. That's part of their job as well. So besides the ESIP, that the, um, <clears throat> the bond council will also help us with the, um, um, you know, the, the, the phase one of the construction. Um, so <clears throat> uh, I have another question. I, I know the answer, but I just want <laughs> Dr. Bragan to, to, to confirm. So I received some questions from, oh, by the way, um, is the personnel agenda online? Because uh, uh, someone texted me that the, the personnel agenda is, is not online yet. Is that IT? I'll find out. I, I don't know. Okay. So the other thing that, that you know, uh, about in the finance resolution, there are some several items. Uh, we have like middle school sports. So we have classroom purchasings, um, and um, <clears throat> you know the special ed purchases and. Uh, um, when you look at the dollar amount, that some of they're not, um, some of the more, some of are, are, are less. So my understanding is these are the things that we have already spent. It doesn't mean that these are the only money we're going to spend on these programs. Uh, we could continue to spend, um, <clears throat> you know, on the thing that's needed. Uh, so people are saying, hey, why are you spend so much money on this? Why are you ignoring this? You know. Uh, so, Dr. Bregan, can you just uh, confirm that, 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 is, that is correct? My understanding is correct? Your understanding is correct. What's listed on the budget are just items that have already been expended. Uh, not on the budget, I'm sorry, on the agenda for tonight. Like for educational supplies district-wide in this year's budget is $2.5 million. Supplies overall is $5.3 million. Um, if you just look at last spring, I know the, uh, the board chose in the budget uh, oversight and a planning committee decided to ask the supervisors and the principals to contact teachers and come up with wish lists of materials and help them support the educational process. And that was over $1.5 million in supplies that were dedicated for that. Um, textbooks, which weren't even mentioned, you know, we allocate $2.4 million a year. Um, there was a question regarding special needs, you know, that's a significant portion of our budget, you know, in excess of um, almost $50 million. So there's a lot of money expended. What you see on there is just a small portion of what's been allocated uh, that's on this agenda. I hope I answered that. Thank you. And there's just one other question. Yes, about, Mr. Shi. Sorry. Uh, uh, just one other question about the finance resolution that I'm done. <laughs> uh, this is about the special ed tuition contract number 44 uh, with the... Um, <clears throat> Can you speak in the mic? It's, I'm yes. having a hard time hearing you. So this is the uh, number 44 special ed tuition contract agreement. Um, so the, 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 the person who sent me this email said, what specific programs are they offering for classified students that we don't offer, and what is the cost? It's a great question. What you see on the agenda is just through an agreement that we enter into with the Union County Ed Services Commission. You know, there's an Ed Services Commission for Middlesex County, which is the Ed Services Commission in New Jersey. There's also a Monmouth Ocean Ed Services Commission that services Monmouth and Ocean Counties. And we typically do send students there for special education programs, depending on the student's need and, uh, and the programs that are offered. And sometimes they're not offered locally, so we'll go to a different county. And this is just an agreement to um, allow us to enter into that. And should one of our students go to one of the specific programs or schools they have, we would get a separate contract delineating the exact amount. Thank you. I'm done with the resolutions. OK, thank you. I'd like to move to public comment on resolutions only. Mr. Manesh. Reminder, you have six total minutes. Doug, you got to read your thing. Are you giving me 12 minutes? Read your thing. What's that? Read your thing. Read my thing. OK. <laughs> read my thing. Are you ready, Mr. Manesh? Sure. 
All speakers are requested to express themselves in a civil manner with due respect for the dignity and privacy of others whose legal rights may be affected. Please note, while it is not the board's intention to stifle comment on matters of legitimate concern to the school community, the public should be aware that if their statements violate the rights of others under the law governing defamation or invasion of privacy, they may face personal liability to the injured party. If speakers are uncertain of their legal ramifications of their comments, the board urges them to seek guidance beforehand from their own legal advisor. Are you giving me one? Thank you very much. Doug, are you giving me one? No, you're on your own. <laughs> Manish Patel, 240 Walman F. I think I'm going to need more than six minutes today. From all the dickering that's going on for the last 20 minutes, I believe, that you guys came back. God knows what you're doing the two hours that you've been there. So let's start. First of all, thank you very much to all of you for approving for my 240 kids. $450,000 or whatever that number is. So thank you all. Second, my question I just uh, learned, we hiring business administrators supplement, somebody who's gonna work for him. Aren't we talking about this for the last six months? And it takes six months to hire a business administration? Come on, we're running a $300 million budget company called Edison Board of Education. And it takes six months for superintendent to find one BA? Over six months, almost a year. That means you're disqualified because you can't hire him. You're not doing enough advertisement. Come on, my friend, you're a doctor. Also, let me remind you that you are using taxpayers' money. When you hire outside services to do other things, and you also, I'm sure, paying somebody else to do BA's work. Either you doing it, VP's doing it, some other president's doing it, somebody's doing it. Find somebody who could do his job because that's an important role to run a company. We are running a company, aren't we? It's a $300 million budget. And it's a taxpayer's money. Well, a lot of single mothers, single parents work hard and give you money because they live in Addison for their kids, and we need to make sure that it's taken care of. Let me also talk about teachers' appointments. We know we didn't hire too many teachers yet. There's appointments going on, but there's still a lot of appointments not done. Union County and other counties, but I have seen on Route 22, I've seen it on when I was going to Philadelphia, a billboard. Teachers are welcome. Starting salary, 65,000 and up. Are we doing any kind of advertisement or are we just doing it on a website of Edison Township? Can you also look into this? In the budget, have you put any money for teachers? When we're giving teachers, students, a trips, somebody just talked about a trip. And I saw that. Teachers take their money, go to trips. But you are spending millions, hard-earned money of those taxpayers, and those teachers have to put their $50, their $100, to feed a child that they take with them, or they feed themselves. If we are sending it on behalf of Edison Township, we can allocate 500,000, maybe 200,000, maybe 100,000, at least give them $50 for the 50 that they spent, half of the money. When it comes to budgeting, and I think it's gonna fall in my buddy's hand, lap, but I just saw a referendum, which Doug wants me to talk about. Three, four, five, six, four, page three, Page four, page five, page six. What does it read? Let me read it for you. And it's easy. Contract was awarded without competitive biddings. When you go shopping, you go to Macy's, JCPenney, you go to TJ Maxx, because that's what the damn shirt for. Macy's $65 and TJ Maxx is 25. And I'm sure Dr. Bregan, you've been there. 
your spouse must have been there and all of your spouses must have been there because I shop in TJ Maxx too. So when you're doing a budget for these millions of dollars, why aren't we doing competitive biddings? It is because we want to get rid of it. People are stupid and they're not gonna listen. They don't read. Today is the first day, you know what? My son came and tapped my shoulder. Dad, you're doing your homework? I said, no, I'm reading the Board of Education referendums. He says, Dad, I'm proud of you. At least after 10 years, you start reading the referendums and go get it. Because they're spending money, but they don't give it to us. When we need it for our lab, our other projects, our music for 10 years, our athletic teams, our a &I programs, and others. So guys, come on, you guys are all educated. I don't have to preach every time I come, but you are looking at 16,000 plus students. Their lives in your hand for four years, 10 years, 12 years, depending on when they moved here in Edison Township. And you guys are ruining it by just putting bids out because you want to get rid of it. You want to use it, you want to do it quick. What the hell is the committee for? Give it to the finance committee. Make an extra two committee. I'm sure Brian would be willing to work. Birol, Mohin, Jerry, they're accommodative people. They can work. I'm sure they will do extra meetings. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Oh, my six minutes over. Six I minutes told you twice. I needed 12. We'll have another period. Thank you. Dr. Bragan, would you like to answer any questions? Well, I think there's a lot of information that was said there that it may be beneficial for me and um, Mr. Patel to sit down and go over because I don't think you have all the information. Just on field trips, the budget's over $600,000 is allocated for field trips. Regarding the, um, the business administrator position, we've been without a full-time business administrator for over a year and we have been actively pursuing and um, we had a, one of the discussions in closed session was pertaining to that. So, you know, there's an allegation that somehow we haven't been negligent in our duties, that's just not accurate. And then to somehow insinuate that somehow we haven't been fiscally responsible, again, not accurate and just not factual. And if that's what we wanna do is get up here and just make up things, that's fine. If you wanna sit down and go over the facts and the information contained in the budget, I would love to have a meeting with you and go over it. Because we do have information that I think may be helpful for you to put the right information out there. Um, Regarding our teachers, you know, uh, our teachers are the core of what we do here. And, um, I don't think you'd have anyone on this board or in the administration that don't believe that. I'd love to have bonuses and salaries that are higher for starting salaries. And I'm saying that publicly because we want to get the best, the brightest, and the most amount of people we can. We have a collective bargaining agreement that prohibits us from deviating from what that structure is. And, you know, we're in a negotiation year this year, and I'm sure those discussions will take place. But I can't just give somebody ten thousand dollars or five thousand or a thousand without it being um, collectively bargained. That's why we have separate units. We have five in this district that we can't just change that and give people extra money. Um, and I'm sure those will be discussions we have as we go through negotiations beginning in, in the course of the school year. Um, and I think that's all I got. But I think uh, it would be beneficial, uh, Mr. Patel, for us to meet and go over some of that information that may be helpful for you. Very good. Thank you. And. You'll have six. You'll have a total of six minutes at the end. Excuse me. Very good, Mr. Patel. Any other public comments? Resolutions only. Ms. Conway. Elizabeth Conway, 20 Netherwood Circle. Do I have to get the floor allowance? Nope. Just once. Oh, because now at the town council meetings, you have to say your name and wait to be told that they have the floor now. So it's... We're different. Okay, my question <laughs> regarding... Welcome here, Ms. Thank Conway. You. Um, I see that we got um, a new supervisor for transportation. And basically, I see that four bus drivers have resigned this month and that we hired six new bus drivers this month. And I was wondering what the status is of the um, new buses. We were supposed to purchase 30 
buses and they were supposed to be in by June 30th and I'd like to know what their status is and of those 30 buses do we have uh, enough bodies to put in those 30 buses because it seems like yes we hire but we're also losing people so are we um, able to utilize the new buses with employees to start in uh, September is my question. Um, my next item is um, paraprofessionals. This happens constantly and it's always been a sad feeling in my heart because I know in special ed uh, there are teachers and paras are moved around like pawns, but just this month 14 paraprofessionals have been transferred from one position to another. And I do know that it, it depends on the children's needs and the powers that be to put the paras where they're definitely needed. But it's still an ongoing thing where you have one para going to one school and then if you look further, another para is going from that school to another school. And I'm just hoping that you'll keep this in mind when uh, in future months, give it a second glance that these people are very valuable uh, employees and not just pawns for uh, our district. I have another question, but it's not about a resolution, so I will come back, even though I only used three minutes. Thank you, Ms. Conway. Thanks, Ms. Conway. Um, yeah, the bus drivers, I think last year around this time we had 25 or 26 full-time bus drivers, and after tonight's agenda, I think we'll have about 38. Um, we're still hiring, we'd like to get more, because the more bus drivers we have, the more routes we can do internally, which will, over time I do believe will save us money and also provide us flexibility um, for trips and other things that take place. Um, the buses are here, they were delivered, almost all of them, by the end of June. Uh, one or two were the first week of July, and they're beautiful. We're, they're over in the, the lot that we built um, by Hoover, and I think we put the new buses in the older lot and moved some of the older buses into the new lot by the maintenance garage. So um, yeah, we're still growing that and we, we hope to over time have uh, enough drivers to um, drive all of our buses and do more routes. Right now, the way the routes are, we have about 375 routes altogether. And um, internally, we're doing about 100 of those routes. So that would mean those other 275 are contracted out over time We'd like to continually bring that down as we get more and more bus drivers so that we can do those routes on our own. Regarding the paraprofessionals, we do uh, applaud them for what they do. They have one of the hardest jobs in the district and they get paid the least amount of money. And anything we can do to help that be better for them and keep them maybe in their same place, in the same school, in the same class. I know Dr. Tui tries to do that as best he can. As you alluded to yourself, Mrs. Conway, sometimes the needs of the children, whether they're one-to-one -one paras or the programs change, um, I will look into that, though. I, I know I did give Dr. Tui that charge to try to keep people where they would like to be as, mo as much and as to the optimal as best as we can. We can't always do that because the needs do change. Some of our self-contained programs were moved this year to accommodate full-day kindergarten, and that would necessitate if the program is longer in the building that the paraprofessional would have to go with them as well. So I hope I answered that for you. Very good. Thank you. Other public comments regarding resolutions only? Mr. Revnak. Good evening, Matt Revnak, second vice uh, first vice president ETA. <laughs> I demoted myself. <laughs> Just a question, actually, with the a number of there's a number of administrators that have been being appointed. Um, one of them is a principal at Ben Franklin School, and one's a vice principal at Thomas Jefferson Middle School, and their dates to be determined. I'm assuming they're employees currently in another district that need to be released. Um, the assistant principal is not as big a deal because obviously, and you have a long-standing principal there, um, but the principal at Ben Franklin, will, will the, this person be in the district for the start of the school year? And if not, who will be running that building to start the school year? That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Dr. Bregan. Yeah, you know, we, we had discussions about this actually in closed session and otherwise. Um, we, we do expect when people leave our district that they honor the contracts that they have, right? You know, I, and sometimes they don't, but our expectation is if you're supposed to give 60 days notice that we would expect you to do that. And it's the same on the other side, right? The people that are currently working in other districts have a contract. 
whether it's 60 days, 30 days, 90 days, I'm not sure. But our expectation would be if these people get approved tonight and it's you know, voted on the agenda, they'll get notified tonight or tomorrow morning and then they'll give their notice and perhaps if their superintendent can find a replacement and let them out earlier, that's great. If not, there isn't. But we will put somebody in place. We won't leave that burden on the people that are there. And we do have some sub-administrators that are also being approved on this agenda. So um, we'll try, we'll do our best as we can to make sure everybody's uh, up to speed and we have uh, an administrative presence in each of those buildings. Other public comments, resolutions only. Anyone else? Okay. I'd like to uh, start with the personnel report. I make a motion to approve the personnel report. Do I have a second? Motion. Second. Mr. Biro Patel, second. Roll call, please. Dr. Haydock? Yes. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Burrell Patel? Yes. Mr. Mohan Patel? Yes. Mrs. White? I have to abstain on coaching, but the rest of it, yes. And Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mr. Shi? Yes. Mrs. Mattaker? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Okay. Um, motion is carried. Thank you. Next, um, I make a motion to approve the administration, curriculum, and instruction, and pupil special services report. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Shee, second. Roll call, please. Dr. Haydock? Yes. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Burrell Patel? Uh, yes on everything, with a comment that uh, on the two administration, 2C two and 2E, and all related financial items, please present to the Budget Planning and Oversight Committee in the future. Yes on the motion. Mr. Mohan Patel? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mr. Shi? Yes. Mrs. Mattaker? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. Next, um, I make a motion to approve the finance report. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Biro Patel, second. All, uh, roll call, please. Dr. Hayda? Yes. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Burrell Patel? Yes. Mr. Mohan Patel? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mr. Shi? Yes. Mrs. Mattaker? Yes on everything except abstain on check number 174385, 2019-20 subscription bus refund. Mr. Schneider? Uh, yes, with the exception I have to abstain on check number 173715 for the amount of $19.73. Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, um, next we have committee reports. Uh, Mr. Biro Patel, you're up first with the Budget and Oversight Committee report. Thank you, Board President. Thank you. Right, so we had a Budget Planning and Oversight Committee meeting on June 21st. Uh, board members in attendance were myself, Brian Rivera, Jerry Shee, and Doug Schneider. Administrators were Dr. Bregan, Ann Cluck, and Dr. Elderelli. The vendors who were in attendance were Gary Goldfarb, Mike Morrow, and Jim Finn from Brown and Brown Insurance Company. The businesses discussed was insurance because we transitioned to the new uh, broker for the insurance services. Uh, so they discussed uh, quite a few stuff in details and we had to make some decisions with reserves and there will be a follow-up meeting. All the details are on the website in the agenda so anyone can feel free to take a look. I don't want to bore any of you here and spend time on reading the whole thing but please feel free to take a look at the meeting minutes and uh, the action item was uh, we'll reconvene in August for, to look at the numbers that were uh, some of the numbers that were discussed and that's going to come up for month of June. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we have the Township Liaison Committee reports. Ms. White. It's actually, I have two for you If tonight. you could just move the microphone towards you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, the first one is for Tuesday, June the 14th. Uh, the Township Board of Ed Liaison Committee was held on Tuesday, June 14, beginning at 11 a.m. and ending at 12 p.m. at the Education Center in, atten in attendance uh, in person were Council VP Joyce Ship Freeman, Councilwoman Margo Harris, Board of Ed members Moen Patel and Birol Patel, Superintendent Dr. Bernard Bragan, HR Director Dr. Edward Adarelli, Deputy Police Chief Robert Dudash, Sergeant Douglas Turner, and Virginia White Committee Chair. In attendance via Zoom were Assemblyman Rob Karabinchik, 
Robert Deal, Chief of Staff, Master Plan Coordinator, Chief of Staff representing Mayor Joshi, Ray Alcantara, Business, Township Business Administrator, Sonia Alves Viveros, and BOE <coughs> Vice President, Chivy Prasad Matiker. We began our meeting with Bob Deal, and Bob provided us with information related to the master plan. The committee meets monthly and represents all areas of our town. This committee co will cover many issues and will hopefully resolve many existing problems. The last time the master plan was addressed was approximately 20 years ago. The committee is planning to complete this project in one year. Assemblyman Karabinchek was a returning guest. He updated us on different grants and programs that are available to all school districts. There's a pilot program for electric school buses. In addition, there's a grant for bus safety cameras, oh, I'm sorry, bus security cameras, both inside and outside of the vehicles. We asked him to provide us with information for our <clears throat> grant writer, and he did that. Uh, Ray Alcantara represented May Mayor Joshi. The mayor is moving forward on many projects from the water park to the community garden. I asked about the proposed recreation center that will be adjacent to the Jets football field. It's supposed to house areas for wrestling, cheerleading, and basketball. I suggested that they include an ice rink. We have an ice hockey team that has to pay for ice time to practice and has to travel great distances to do so. Deputy Chief Dudash gave us an update on the junior and senior police academies. Enrollment has increased, particularly for the senior police academy. The juniors are not far behind. This is great progress. In addition, they're providing drug education information for our health classes covering opioids, vaping, and the dangers of marijuana. Sergeant Turner brought us up to date with progress regarding the traffic issues that are being addressed around town. Jackson Avenue is moving in a positive direction. He's also dealing with traffic issues at Woodbrook and James Monroe. They're looking for signage out here and I think they already have it. Uh, in addition, they're using flags to cross Plainfield Road by Woodrow Wilson Middle School for now. We're looking into New Dover Road and Tingley Lane to access, to assess potential ways to help. Overall, this, uh, over, uh, overall, all discussed traffic issues are moving forward in a positive direction. I introduced our new Township Business Administrator to the committee. Her name is Sonia Avilas Viros. She will be included whenever she's available, and we are so pleased to have her on the board. The Edison Art Society has been very busy. They dedicated a new gazebo in Papiani Park. They introduced a new exhibit at the municipal building on the third floor. If you have the opportunity, please go visit. Three scholarships were awarded to undergrads. There was one each for J.P. Stevens and Edison High and Middlesex College. Lastly, the painted pianos are back on Amboy Avenue. Our next meeting is scheduled for July the 12th, respectfully submitted for Virginia White. Okay, um, the Township BOE Liaison Committee was held on Tuesday, July 12th at the Education Center, beginning at 11 a.m. and ending at approximately 12.15. In attendance in person were Assemblyman Sterling Stanley, Legislative Director A2 Assemblyman Stanley, Verinda Sood, Councilwoman Margo Harris, Councilman Rich Brescher, Deputy Police Chief Bob Dudash, Sergeant Lisa Camino, BOE members Dr. Hadek, Moen Patel, Virginia White, Dr. Bernard Bragan, and Dr. Adarelli, Director of Human Resources. In attendance via Zoom were Shivri Prasad Madiker and Ray Alcantara, Chief of Staff to Mayor Joshi. Assemblyman Stanley began our meeting and he spoke of existing, of extending for one year the useful life of school buses. He also stated that the Motor Vehicle Commission can also extend the life of buses an additional year. He noted that electric school bus, the electric school bus bill will be passing the Assembly and Senate and is awaiting the governor's, governor's signature. I asked or inquired about funding for the security cameras both inside and outside the school buses. 
as well as GPS location systems being installed on all buses. Mrs. Mattaker expressed that all school buses need to have cameras, and she also asked if the state would fund all hazardous bus routes. Assemblyman Stanley is, sp is sponsoring a bill, A3056, in the assembly, assembly, I'm sorry, in the assembly focusing on student mental health. The bill would grant students five days of excused mental health days from school. Assemblyman Stanley asked if our district is actively addressing student me mental health issues. Dr. Bragan provided him with an overview of our district's responses and procedures that we have in place to address these critical issues. Assemblyman Stanley said that Edison was well ahead of the curve. Lastly, he mentioned another bill that allows for one absence to attend government functions. In addition, he proposed work, working with Mayor Joshi to de develop a recreation board that consists of citizens to develop long-range impro improvement plans. Ray Alcantara spoke about the new sports complex being created on Central Ave and shared some preliminary drawings of the building. Deputy Chief Dudash introduced Sergeant Lisa Camino to the group. Sergeant Camino will be replacing Sergeant Turner, who has been promoted. You know, so we're so proud of him. Uh, Deputy Ch uh, Chief Dudash also spoke about traffic concerns for arrival and dismissal at Woodrow Wilson Middle School. They're using flags to assist with the crossing. The updated traffic pattern at Jackson during the arrival and dismissal times for Hoover will remain in place for the upcoming school year. The crossing guard issue has not been fully resolved, but they're working on coming up with solutions for the school year, including the possibility of privatizing. He also updated us on the plans to offer more counseling and supportive services for families in crisis. The summer police academies for the middle and high schools are filling up and are scheduled to take place in the coming, upcoming weeks. Deputy Chief Dudash spoke of his goal to have more officers in school to foster positive relationships with students. The Edison Arts Society a, a photography exhibit by Patricia McCarthy Rubin will be at the municipal building beginning July 28th to September 29th. If you have the opportunity, stop up and view it. A new mural of the flag raising on Iwo Jima will be placed on the VFW 3117 building on National Road. The next liaison meeting is scheduled for September, September the 13th. Respectfully submitted, Virginia White. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. White. Well, President. Yes, Mr. Shee. So, um, Mrs. White, good, good job. Um, as far as the ice rink, uh, on the second meeting when the drawing was presented, is the ice rink there? Which one? The ice rink. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I brought it up again. I did. You know, I don't, I don't give up on those things. Yes, please. Don't. And, uh, you know, I didn't really get an answer, but they are going to look into it, and that's the beginning. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, um, did the... Uh, Assemblyman Sturdy talking about the GPS bill that was been uh, sponsored by Nancy Pinken and um, uh, Mr. Rob Karabinchek before. Because uh, we're talking about cameras here. Um, we, uh, they talked about the GPS on all the buses. Okay, uh, we, you know, our, our new buses all have GPSs, if, uh, I, I think I'm right. Dr. Yeah, this is for the, for the whole state. We have yeah. all our new buses, and then, but the contracted buses do not possess them. We, you know, they are, you know, as I said, uh, Assemblyman Karabinchek provided us with, uh, you know, all kinds of literature and grants that Dr. Bregan was going to review and pass on to our grants uh, writer, and hopefully, you know, we'll get some good feedback from that. Assemblyman uh, Stanley is, you know, he, this is his second time back here. You know, he's a very, very welcome guest, and he's always very, very, um, you know, helpful, and he advises well, and he does offer an assist in every way that he can. He was, his biggest concern was the mental health 
bill that he's trying to get through. That was very, very important to him, as well as it should be. Okay. Just uh, one last question. What is the status on the Stoughton School? Stoughton School was what's not. The what's the next step? <laughs> what, what is the next step that uh, we need you to do? You know how I the... love Stoughton School. You all know that. But Stelton School was not on my agenda, so I don't really have good answers for you. We're waiting, we are still waiting. It is by no means forgotten, it really isn't. Um, it's just that right now we're at a, you know, what should I call it, a hiccup in the road, you know, and uh, we just have to wait a little bit more time. Sure. But I promise you I will get back to you with something. Thank on you so Stelton much. School. I know you won't, you won't, uh, you won't let go of that. <laughs> That's your baby. I just don't. Now I have that Stelton School and the ice rink. Thank so. you. Now you have two. More present ice rink. Yes, Can I uh, add on to something? Thank, thank you, Mr. Shi, Ms. White, Mr. Patel. Yes. So, Ms. White, um, with that liaison meeting, the last question that was asked was that question by Richard Brescher and uh, myself as well. So, hopefully, they will act upon it and try to, you know, honor what we were, what we started last year in regards to Stelton School. And I know that Jeannie is going to be on top of that because I will also be with her asking the same question for every meeting. So let's get it on the agenda for next time, too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Now we got to wait. Not us. Okay, Ms. Maniger. So the Performance Monitoring Committee had an internal meeting on July 21st from 4.15 p.m. to 5.21 p.m. Uh, the administrators in attendance were Dr. Bragan, Dr. Alderelli, and Richard Benedict. Board members were myself, Shivi Prasad Madhukar Chair, Virginia White, and Beetle Patel. Uh, the committee discussed uh, many things. Uh, among the first item was parents had not, had not received any notification on subscription busing after filling the form. Uh, the administration updated the committee and said that only 400 out of 2,600 subscription busing applications had been processed. Given the lag, the committee expressed concern. The administration said they will get more support staff to assist in processing applications to expedite it. The committee suggested communicating with residents that are affected via email. And thank you, Dr. Bragan, for the email that went out. Um, uh, so, the, so they'll update all parents about the status of busing and everyone will know what to expect. This will also be helpful for parents who have filled in the form but have not received an acknowledgement so that there are no last minute issues. The administration suggested that parents who have not received an acknowledgement of their subscription busing application should reach out to Richard Benedict. Uh, the committee inquired about the status of bus contracts for the upcoming school year and administration said that contracts have been signed and at this point they do not envision any issues. Uh, we also discussed GPS. These will be available on all district owned buses for the upcoming school year. Parents will be able to download an app and track buses in real time. Um, Dr. Bragan said on future busing contracts from outside vendors, GPS will be included. Um, committee suggested that for students who are not on these tracked buses, a system of text notification should be in place so that alternative arrangements can be made if, if buses are running late or will not come at all because of some unforeseen reason. This will help students get to school on time. Uh, uh, the administration also said, talked about free busing and said that it's based on the shortest distance from the home address to the school based on state law and not on the bus stop location. Therefore, there'll always be homes on the border all around the district where neighbors may have different busing status. The committee expressed uh, concern on everything directed to, uh, through technology. Um, this encompasses many areas of enrollment, transportation, um, lunch. Uh, community pass was also discussed. Who oversees it? Where can residents reach out for assistance if they need help? Dr. Ben, uh, Bragan asked Mr. Benedict to make arrangements so residents can easily access information. Uh, the importance of having a live person who, res who residents can reach out to over the phone was also discussed. Uh, the committee also discussed how all outward facing Board of Ed departments need to be oriented from a customer service perspective so residents seeking services are able to 
have a positive experience. Um, enrollment, uh, the committee just was informed that enrollment was still lower than, ex um, than expected. Uh, the committee suggested importance of completing enrollment as soon as possible. It was suggested to have additional people screen all documentation before we begin the screening process. The administration is considering moving the enrollment to respective schools from next year onwards. Uh, the committee was also updated on kindergarten. Uh, the committee inquired about summer school and about how sc students were faring because of very high temperatures recently. Uh, the committee was informed that all classes are only being held in air-conditioned rooms. Uh, the committee was also updated on parent portal, which will remain open through the summer. Uh, portion for viewing classes is closed and will open during the last week of August. Meanwhile, parents will be able to fill, uh, fill out mandatory forms before that. Finally, the, com uh, the committee uh, discussed uh, communication and how communication is key. Um, the district needs to be proactive. It is important to make everyone aware of problems, what is being done to correct them, um, and, we, and how, uh, so that we can have things up and running. We serve the public and have to keep them informed. Submitted by Shivi Madhukar. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Madhukar. Um, I think this would be an appropriate time to ask you if that was a week ago, so we've had progress in some of these areas. I was informed this afternoon we, we tried to triage and put as many people as we could on the uh, subscription bus applications. As you know, last year that was a, an issue for us with uh, some of our transportation concerns. And uh, before the meeting, I was told the 2,600 outstanding subscription applications were processed and the students were placed on buses. And I believe parent contacts are taking place now or will be shortly there coming. So yeah, good, yeah. great progress. Yeah. Thank and you. It, it was a result of that meeting that we uh, got the information collectively and decided to triage and put all the resources there. So worked out really well. Yeah, thank you. And it would also be an appreciate time to ask you, Dr. Bregan, how's enrollment right now? Actually, I had it on my thing, but I didn't read the whole thing. But Dr. Bregan can talk about sure, it. Sure, sure. You know, one of the concerns we had for enrollment this year was with our kindergarten, obviously moving from full day kindergarten. Last year's kindergarten class was about 750 students, and not everybody came that would traditionally come for first grade because it was only half day. So um, we anticipated our this year's kindergarten enrollment would be somewhere in the ballpark of what last year's first grade would be. That seemed to make sense at about 1,150 students. As of today, we have 1,073 students for kindergarten in process. Um, they haven't all cleared and submitted all the paperwork, but they've been um, entered into the system. So I feel pretty good about that. That's within, um, you know, 100 students of what we thought it would be for September. So we're continually working on that, continually trying to get the information advertised, and so people don't wait till the last minute to enroll, um, which they often sometimes do. But if they do, we have a plan. We will triage that as well and, and try to make sure nobody's waiting long or outside in the heat and process it as quickly as they can. I encourage any parents that want to register their students in the district, please do it ASAP. Waiting um, till late August or close to September just stresses the entire system, and it's hard to process it. There is some paperwork that has to be um, you have to make sure, and it's vetted, that it's all supplied and we have all that, and then we have to process the student, put them in the right grade levels. Sometimes some of the students need to be screened, and that takes a little bit of time, which frustrates people when school's starting the next day. So I encourage anyone and everyone that hears this, if you're enrolling a child in Edison Public Schools, try to do it uh, ASAP. Dr. Bregan. Very good. Um, Mr. Rivera? I actually registered my daughter last week. Um, she's coming here for first grade, and uh, the process went pretty smooth. Awesome. So, thank you for to enrollment. Did they know who you were? <laughs> My wife was uh, a little lazy. She didn't go change her last name, so uh, oh, her so last it was name a secret is different shopper. than mine. It was so, a secret shopper then. Good. It went well. Good. Very good. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thank you for those committee reports. Upcoming meetings. Uh, about a month from now, Tuesday, August 23rd, we have a combined caucus and public meeting here at James Monroe at 6 p.m. So we'll be back here. It's not on a Thursday, it's on a Tuesday, August 23rd, 2022. Next, uh, board member open discussion. Um, Ms. White, I know you read two very, very long liaison committee reports, but I'd love to start with you anyway. Do you have anything to add? Well, I don't think we said anything about graduation, which was absolutely beautiful. I mean, it, it, it truly was. You know, like the high point for me of being a board member 
is going to graduation. And I was able to attend both of them. You know, I missed you, Elizabeth. You know, but uh, you know, it was just beautiful. They did a great job. It was at the rack, and I think it just went very, very well. Um, J.P. Stevens had a drum line that was like incredible. Edison High, you know, their band was super. You know, it was you know just a beautiful thing. So, I thought I'd mention it. Congratulations, class of 2022. You're ready to attack the world. You know, so. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. White. And thank you for putting together those township liaison meetings. I know that it's not easy to get all of those important people into one room. So kudos to you. Mr. Shi. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate Donald Batvek. Just got appointed to the principal of uh, the, the principal of Linden L School. Um, you know, that school is a community school and uh, needs a lot of love. And I wish you nothing but the success. And, um, you know, congratulations again. Uh, since this is a combined meeting, um, my number of questions to Dr. Bregan might exceed my normal quota. So uh, I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> it's two meetings, so I could have split into two, but, you know, it's, it's, it's combined into one. <laughs> so one was already touched base on it, is a GPS on the busing. I'm so glad that, that we're finally um, having a GPS tracking after two years of asking. Dr. Briggan, I think it's two years, right? At least. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope that will help our students, um, you know, uh, they don't have to wait, uh, you know, uh, 45 minutes outside in the cold. Uh, the other thing related to the busing, and you, you alluded on, is um, do we have a wait list for subscription buses? So the, the people who want to get on the bus, uh, but they don't have it yet, but if we have enough number of students, we can possibly provide a bus. So that's a question. The second is the, the turf field of J.P. Stevens. Uh, where is it? Um, you know, it's been going on for quite a lot of time. The, th the third one is about the parent portal. It, it, it mentioned a little bit in the um, uh, committee report. Um, we have always been in the past that when you try t in, in the late August um, changing password and stuff like that, it's, it's always a struggle. Um, we making any head waving there to make things easier uh, for the parents and the kids. Um, the fourth one is, I've been a pain asking this, and I also asked if we can put it into the policy, is the status of residence verification. We received the tax record from the township. Um, have we started you know, programming to verify the residences? Uh, the, <clears throat> the fifth one, you already uh, touched on it, which is, you know, uh, what I'm saying, how many bus drivers we have hired, I was also asked in, in, in the public, and how many routes we can cut, you know, outsourcing routes um, and, and uh, having it internally. I, I know before the school starts, we have to have all the routes, and if we bid out the routes, and then we hired our, um, our internal drivers, uh, and we start going, in, going um, let out, Internal folks handle that. Will there be any 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 penalty um, for um, breaking the quote unquote breaking the contract? All right. Um, what's the latest number of students enrolled in the in the garden, kindergarten? Um, and the th okay. The the other one is a finance resolution number fifty. We have a um, we approve the, the the premium for the a, uh, risk insurance. I uh, just want to see what is the dollar amount compared to what we have budgeted. And the last question is, it, it's, um, um, we have in uh, some of the, the schools that uh, we have um, moved the students from kindergarten, um, we, we are preparing the, the, the schools for um, kindergarten. And uh, we have some, some air conditionings in the um, maybe, uh, elementary school for special needs students. Now they're moving into the other classrooms. Are these air conditioning units being moved at the same time? 
um, if we are combining the, the kids together into, 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 um, into rooms that, that they might not have uh, air conditioning. Um, so that's, the, that's all. That's Sorry. it? Sorry. Right. No worries. I, I apologize. Yeah, we, we talked about the GPS on the busing, and you know, we're, we're going to have about 60 of our own buses that will have a transponder that correlate, correlates with our transfinder software that the parents on those buses will get access to an application for their phone that they could learn the location of the bus and where it is and if it's going to be late or if it's close to the stop. So that that's going to be really helpful. Moving forward, I'd like to, when we do bids, move, if, that we, if that proves to be very successful, um, to request it in our contracted bids as well. We didn't do that, so we can't you know, expect them all to have it at this point. Um, currently, there is no wait list for subscription busing. That uh, all the uh, requests that have been submitted have been processed as far as before this meeting today. So I, I will, we're gonna stay on top of that as, as we were uh, made intimately aware that was an area of concern for last year. So we'll continue to uh, stay on top of that and try to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, the JPS turf field uh, question is very timely. We did get information just a short while ago from the Department of Environmental Protection that we uh, can tentatively move forward. There's one little area that we have to um, certify as not being a wetlands. So that's right now with our architect who's working on that project, which is DMR. We hope to bring some more information to that to our next committee meeting and talk about what the time frame would be for that. I know the parents were anxious about that. Uh, gee, that's over a year ago, if I remember correctly. Um, the parent portal is now currently open, but we do intend to close it next Monday um, for maintenance and rollover. But I was told it would be back up and running by the end of the week. And you know, sometimes the schedules are not shared until uh, closer to the start of school to make sure we have all that allocated with the right teachers and the right student schedules. But we will uh, be on top of that. If there's any concerns, please direct them to my office so that if somebody gets locked out or can't get their password, um, we don't anticipate a problem, but if they have it, let me know. The status of the resident verification, verification I know we talked about that. We did get the files from the, the recreation department, I'm um, sorry, from the township department. And we're comparing those now. That, that comparison has not taken place. I reviewed it with our attendance department today. The attendance investigators are not in in the summer. As soon as they do come in and they come in before the start of school, that'll be their main charge to compare that list from the township with our list from our student database and any anomalies that present themselves will be investigated. But we have not done that yet, Mr. Shi. Um, I will continue to ask. I know, I know, and I'll make sure we do I'm it. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, um, regarding the bus drivers, as we kind of talked about that a little bit, and we do have a couple of bus drivers that we're not going to assign to start the school year to triage just in case somebody drops routes like they did last year and so on and so forth, you know, um, to be more prepared. And then we also had a couple of times when our, our own people are out sick, obviously, or they have personal days. So we may be overstaffed a little to start the school year, and I'd rather do that until we figure it out as we move forward. So I don't think we could get, um, if we have a contract, as I, I said earlier, regarding um, employment and staff, I wouldn't expect us not to honor it and drop it. So again, we may be a little overstaffed in September, and I'd rather be there than understaffed. And we'll figure that sweet spot out as we move forward. Um, as we said on the agenda tonight, we have a new supervisor of transportation, so you know they'll get their feet wet this year, and we'll have a better understanding as the year progresses. Again, I'm anticipating a much better scenario than last year. We had those 50 routes that were dropped on um, Labor Day weekend, which was really difficult for, for us, but also, I understand, for our community members that had to find transportation. Um, the kindergarten enrollment, I thought I mentioned that already. Uh, yep. I think we're at 1,073 right now and uh, that are in process, not fully completed. They may be missing a piece of information or not. 90, 960 are fully complete. And again, we estimated somewhere around um, 1,150. So we're very close to that mark. And uh, again, as I said earlier, if you're gonna register your child and need us in public schools, please do it as soon as possible and don't wait till the last minute. Our risk insurance premium was a bit higher this year than we budgeted. We budgeted about 2.4 million. As you see on the agenda tonight, it came in at about 2.8. We do expect um, some monies back from, oh, it's eluding me, from the Jersey State for uh, workers' compensation and for some other things, but um, it did go up a little bit, and what people under don't always understand, when we have insurance settlements and things like that, um, that impacts our overall liability and what our coverage will be moving forward. So uh, we do have a, a new risk carrier and a broker that's going to help us actively manage that moving forward, so um, we'll stay on top of that. 
And Mr. Shi, I forgot your last question. Last oh, AC question units. AC the, units. AC hey. units. Yeah. <clears throat> the air conditioning units. Obviously, we're we're here in this building uh, for this meeting and uh, towards the end of July because there is climate controlled and air conditioning, and you know that's really uh, something that we look to move forward as we had discussions with that um, at our committee, of the whole for infrastructure improvements. But air conditioning as it now is situated is if um, a staff member or a student has a medical necessary necessity that we put it in the rooms and we have it there. If that student or staff member moves to a different location that doesn't have it and they have the same requirement, we would obviously have to have air conditioning. Okay. So um, we're working on that right now, but ideally everybody would want it, right? If September, it's gonna be 95 degrees, it'd be great for everyone to have it. Right now we don't have that capacity, but we're, uh, we're working towards it. So the ACs uh, are moving with the kids. That's they are if the need if for the, the need is there. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shee. Mr. Rivera. Thank you. Um, I have a, basically about three comments. The first one I do want to do is congratulate all of our new appointments. Um, welcome to SM Public Schools. Um, I look forward to working with all of you. Uh, the second thing I wanted to do, I wanted to thank, uh, on behalf of the Board of Ed, I wanted to thank uh, Dr. Bragan and his team and our food services for the summer meals program. Um, thank you for listening to the concerns of our parents and having two um, dis distribution sites. Um, today, I, my wife was actually driving down by Edison High and she noticed there was an older gentleman with either a child or a grandchild with a cart going to pick up food. So obviously he didn't have transportation to go to J.P. Stevens, so um, our families appreciate that you put another distribution site at Edison High. Just an update on that. At John P. Stevens today, there were 575 pickups, and Edison High School was 500. That's a total of over uh, 10,600 meals. Wow. So it was well needed, and I'm glad we were able to facilitate it. There was a problem initially getting up and running very quickly. That's why we did JP first, but the, the plan was always to expand it to both sides of town. The residents, it, I'm sure, appreciate it, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's awesome. And finally, I want to say happy birthday to my wife. I apologize that I'm, that I'm not there, but I promise I'll get home soon. And hopefully I, don't, I stay out of the doghouse. So happy birthday, Nancy. I love you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Happy birthday, Nancy. Ms. Madiger. I uh, just want to thank uh, anyone and everyone in the Transportation Department, whoever worked to expedite these subscription busing. Uh, because in, it seems like in five business days, they were able to process more than 2,000 applications. And that's, uh, at the meeting, I remember we were told that it would not be done until mid-August, and for them to do this within five days must have been, a lot of people must have been really working over time. And I just wanna, if any parent is watching, just wanna um, remind that if you haven't received an acknowledgement uh, after signing up, then please reach out to Richard Benedict. That would be all, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Biro Patel. Thank you, Board President. Okay, so one of the things that happened this week was amazing. Dr. Bregan, the rendering and the progress of all the projects, the email that was sent out to the parents, that's very good. That, that's awesome. Thank so you. hopefully we can continue that every month and people would love it. Um, and hopefully we can have Lincoln and EHS completed by beginning of the school year. It's, not, it's very challenging, uh, but the auditorium and at EHS and the Lincoln, let's hope for the best. Uh, the summer school feedback has been very good for there have been no hiccups, no issues, and parents and the students have been loving it. So thank you for that. Uh, I would second what Brian Rivera said about the meals. So thank you, thank you for that. Uh, I want to ask a question about um, in the committee we approved the school wish list. So is everything on track for them to get in September? I do believe so. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And uh, one of the things I asked was on 30th April was about uh, implementing a search feature on the website. So if anyone searches something through the committee, through the meet meeting minutes from the past, they can get a quick search result. So if you can please take a look at that. Okay. Right? That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Ms. Peng. No, nothing. Mr. Mohan Patel. Thank you, Board President. Um, just wanted to add a few more uh, comments and questions. Uh, Dr. Bregan, what was the criteria for choosing our bond council? I, I think you might have addressed it, but I'm just curious. Um, we looked at a couple things. One was you know, what the cost structure was, but as, as well as their familiarity and their reputation as far as working in that field. 
And that was the criteria that we used to make the determination. Great. The reason why I ask is when we had a Jerry's referendum three years ago, that was the same bond council that we actually were looking into. And at that time, we had um, vice president board member that was running for candidacy using that as a platform, basically saying that that was an that was not the right candidate or that was not the right uh, bond council to go because it was some kind of quid pro quo here. I was just curious as to why that was, you know, uh, because if that was the case and that was out in the public back then, I'm sure that's gonna be coming up again saying why did we use the same bond council? So I'm glad you clarified it, the reason why. The other thing I wanted to add is in regards to the BA position, we were actually looking for this position for a while, and I don't know if you remember, there was a great resignation where we had over 400 million jobs being lost, or four, four million jobs being lost at the time. So it was not that we were looking for a BA, we were actually in the process of finding the right BA, because this position is second, in a way. If you look at it, it's a $300 million budget here that we're dealing with. So in order for us to get the right position filled with the right candidate, it takes a while. And we went through a lot of applications. We actually almost hired somebody, but at the last minute, that person wanted to do a remote job which required a full-time job staying in place. So that's the reason why we don't have one filled. But I'm glad we're in the process of finding someone soon. The other thing is, All right, um, basically that was it in regards to those two points that we just made. I just wanna make sure that everyone knows the clarity that the reason why we chose this bond council is because they're experts in what they do, not because there's a relationship anywhere here. I just wanna clarify that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. Mr. Haydock, Dr. Haydock, sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I second uh, a lot of the things that everybody's saying. Um, uh, thank you to the administrators that uh, put a process together this, uh, this summer to hire wonderful staff. Um, all those staff members are approved. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bregan, for approving a, a principal that's going to be wonderful at Lindenau. Uh, Mr. Uh, Plafiat, you're going to be great there. Uh, good luck on that position. I know the only sad person is sitting right next to you, Mr. Dugan. Um, we'll have plenty of tissues for you there at uh, Menlo Park. Um, because uh, I know you're losing a good quality administrator in that building. So uh, great job and good luck. Uh, we know teacher quality is the number one researched uh, school factor. So having quality teachers approved this evening takes us a step further for everything our students deserve in this town. Um, and also, I just want to um, compliment uh, Ms. Cirillo and uh, Mrs. Blevins. Um, they have some wonderful students. I had the opportunity to attend a talent show at the Hale Park. Um, those kids are so talented. Uh, when they come back to school, I'm sure they're going to tell their teachers, um, Mrs. Blevins especially, because uh, as we all know, the motto over there at uh, Woodrow Wilson is uh, reach for the stars. They're all stars because they sang, they danced, uh, and they're going to be writing all about it when they return. And I know teachers say that. What did you do this summer? They have plenty to show off and, and talk about. So um, great job on that end. Um, and thanks to the board for moving things together on our uh, infrastructure, the time spent uh, this summer just updating the community. I think the feedback I'm getting in my neighborhoods um, is that um, you know the projects are well received. Air conditioning is a high priority, and I know that's on our list too, um, but the building structures and putting uh, students in classes that they can actually move and having teachers have the ability to teach lessons um, with a little bit of room in the class and not overcrowding is, is a big initiative moving forward for our town. So keep up the good work, everybody, and uh, have a good rest of the summer. Be safe. Thank you, Dr. Haydock. Um, I'd just like to close out board member comments with the excitement of full day kindergarten, right? So we have more public comment. Yeah. No, 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 I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting some help from the audience. As, as I was saying, um, we're about to embark on full day kindergarten for the first time in a long time in Edison Township, and it's huge. I think about all of the money. I have three kids in the district that all had to go to private full day kindergarten. I don't think it's debatable that full day kindergarten gets academically your, your, your students farther ahead. And I know it's difficult. I know at the building levels it's not going to be easy to, to, to do this. The administration, the, the building principals, the teachers, the powers, everybody has to come together to get this done. It might not be 
perfect, but I think it's going to work um, with all of the talent we have in the leadership positions. And most importantly for the taxpayers, the amount of money I could have saved by not sending my kids to private full day kindergarten is enormous with three kids, right? It's, it should be our task as a board to get a little greedy. Um, Pre-K four, pre-K three, the amount of money for three children in, from my household, if I had pre-K three, pre-K four, and kindergarten paid for, it would be tens and tens of thousands of dollars. I don't, maybe even six figures actually, if I think about it. And academically, that is where we need to be in Edison Township. We have to strive for that. I know there's a real estate issue, there's infrastructure things. We, we just don't have space for everything that we want to have space for. But that's what this board, I think, unanimously is really behind. We want to strive for, obviously, the academic excellence, and this is just one piece of the puzzle. So in a little bit over a month, we have 1,073 students that are now going to be saving their parents' money, right? This board made a decision and saved, I, I can't imagine the enrollment in private kindergarten going down and how much they're losing, but I don't care. So this is very exciting. Um, as a board, I think we're very, very thrilled to give this to our taxpayers, and it's only gonna get better from here, I hope. So with that said, I wanna turn it over to public comment. Um, as usual, it's six minutes. Um, I've already read the disclaimer, so I'm ready to go. Um, Mr. Manesh, I'm gonna go first. Miss Anita, you're next, okay? I think you should have a meeting here every time. My wish come true on a first shot, 12 minutes. I love it. Let me go back to what Mohin just said, appointment of bond council. Dr. Bragan, isn't this is the one where we did $200 million bond and you spent some of your money too to get this approved and it didn't work? Do you think it's gonna work this time? It was defeated twice by township and we're spending money again with the same company. Think about it. I mean, we are spending taxpayers' money. Financial services, again, it's part of the referendum things. You are doing the same thing, repeat. And people in this township do remember because we are all senior citizens, including myself, one year from now, and we remember pretty good. Especially the wives. They remember since the day you get married to today. So remember, those ladies help out the husbands and the referendum gets defeated every time. Okay. All right? What are your services? When we say, I just realized while I was looking at the things, price increased so much this year. If this is the same company worked for us last year, why is the price a huge increase? Not a small, a huge increase, and that's waste of taxpayers' money. The other thing is, I just spoke to one of the parents. She's probably still around. She's not. She spoke to me. She goes, I call your math administrator, Miss Loaf. She never get back to her. Not once, not twice, three times. So I told her, why don't you speak? I'll stand by you if you're afraid. She goes, nope, my kids told me, don't say anything, mom. We're gonna be in trouble in school. When they go to school, if your administrator in your office doesn't help, this parent stands outside and then she leaves. Come on, it just happened in this meeting. And I'm sure Mr. President, you probably saw her when you went out to the bathroom too. She was standing right outside, and she felt bad. I can't get any help. Transportation, we need to have a camera there. Look at the abuse that teach students are getting. I just got a text message from one of the parents. Manesh, make sure you talk about it. I was abused a few days ago. I was really abused, and I told her, I will take a meeting with you, Dr. Bragan, and try to bring the parents in, if she is willing to come. Listen, we are here to help them. We're getting paid. Whenever we hire somebody, they're getting paid to work. 
for the taxpayer. And if this is abuse they get, that's not good. The other thing I was going to say was, you say 1,073 kids in pre-K. We are 30 days away from opening the schools again. Did you talk to Realtors Association? I don't know if anybody here is Realtor. I'm a Realtor. There's 16 to 18 houses up for closing within next one week. And guess what? It's in one office alone. And if that's in Addison alone, we have 20 plus offices of Realtors. How many house closing is that? Somebody please go on to Realtors.com and find out how many houses available in Addison Township. And you'll be shocked how many is up for sale. Because when the parents realize their kids are done, they go to college, they move out. They go to Peace Cardway, they go to East Brunswick, and they move out of here because they achieved what they want from J.P. Stevens and Edison High. The other thing I will tell you is, we talked about cricket last time. Somebody just mentioned. There was a private meeting with one of you, I don't know who, they won't, I won't mention on the board. They were promised bathrooms. They paid the fees, bathroom was not accessed. What are we doing? We're telling these taxpayers, remove the candidates who are good on this board? Come on. Once you promise, try to keep the promise. If it costs us something, there's a way to get back to that. The other thing is, Dr. Bray, I got 54 minutes to say this. Dr. Bray, you say you don't have $10,000, $5,000, $3,000. Teachers are not asking for that money. They're asking for $50, $100 for their trips. Not much. And my last question is, after all reconciliation of your finances, I'm sure you, Beryl and Doug's gonna have a white hair by tomorrow morning. How much money did you guys overspend or how much money did you guys save? And if it's saved, where is it? If it's overspent, how are we gonna get it? Thank you. I still got 15 minutes, buddy. Thank you. Can you take any of that? Board. Um, yeah, like I said earlier, Manesh, perhaps uh, us sitting down and going over and having a meeting would be helpful because we're, we're not doing any referendum. So I don't know what that reference was, but um, one of the things I heard was there was a parent, at least one or two, that had a concern with their child that wasn't met. If that ever happens, contact my office directly. Email me, phone me. Um, I don't want any parent or any child feeling that they're not being, um, their needs aren't being met, and especially you use the word abused. If that ever happens to anyone, we would want to know right away. So please get that information to me. Um, I, I forgot what the last question yeah. was. Realtors. If we have money left over, oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, How yeah, yeah. Much we overspend. And, Understood. And we, we, did, we did not overspend any, in, in, in any areas, and we did at the June board meeting any uh, excess surplus that we had up to uh, an amount of $9 million, I believe, we were going to put into an insurance reserve fund for a self insured insurance program. Thank you. Board President? Yes. Can I answer a few of the questions he had I addressed, he brought up, so I want to. Briefly, sure. Sure. Just. Just to add on to the note, you said a lot of houses are being sold, uh, realtor offices, and that is true, I see that as well. The reason why they came to the, the township is because of our school systems, and you could agree with that, right, 100%. So now, when the time comes for investing into, this, into the schools, and we have a referendum that's gonna address six of the schools back in the day when Jerry had put that out with the whole board, that would have addressed the six schools and the issues that we had, right? And it was going to cost us 180 somewhat million dollars, and it was going to cost nine million, eight point four million dollars a year. Guess what our budget is? At that time, it was 280 something. How much was it, Dr. Brigham? If you don't mind me answering. Uh, roughly, I want to say 274. 274, 274 million dollars at that time. You add 8.4 million dollars to that budget. That's how much it would have cost us to take care of the problem three years ago, instead of that problem being used as a political ploy to go against the referendum that would have saved our kids from the overcrowding schools. 
right? That's one point. You're saying you want to defeat a referendum if it comes back again, but think about it. Your house values are based on the school system that the school kids go to and the pe people that come and buy the houses here. So my point is this. You could defeat every referendum you want. At the end of the day, it's an investment into your future and your houses. That's one thing. And now your school budget is $300 million above what was going to cost you to get your schools fixed. Two hundred seventy-four or seventy-six million plus eight point four million, your budget is three hundred million now. So you don't even have the fixes that you wanted, but your budget is still up there. So just remember that next time a referendum comes and you decide whether you want to go for it or not, what is it going to affect and how is it going to affect? You said the kids, the parents, after they're done with our school system, they move out. Guess what? Our skills, our kids are going to a school that is 500 plus students overcrowded, and we could have fixed the problem three years ago if it wasn't used as a political ploy last, last time. And I don't feel like that should be used again. But that's if you want to bring it, let's do it. That's fine. But that's my point that I want to make. Okay. So if you want to defeat a referendum, do it. But it's going to cost at the peril of the people that go to the. Okay. Schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patel. No, no Mr. No. Patel, you're no. you're finished. Miss Miss Anita has the floor. I'm. No. You do not. At the end, you have 10 seconds. At the end. At the end. No, Miss Anita is up. First Thank timers. You. Hi, Anita, Edison, New Jersey. I hope all your summer is going on well. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the entire board. Uh, we did a great job uh, last year. Um, we did facilities improvement. Uh, we did a lot of e-sports. Uh, we bought a lot of academic improvements. Uh, we had the support of the uh, budget committee for uh, the robotics and AI and technology skills. So that's a good job. Now, progressing to the next year, what, what can we see uh, in the next year? Uh, Edison is a diverse town. And we pride ourselves as a community of diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion. Uh, as the transportation and the enrollment program rolls, there's going to be a lot of public coming to the window and asking doubts and clarifications. So I sincerely request the departments, the personnel for standing near the window to be patient. Patience is a virtue. And I just thought of a solution approach. Maybe you have a very nice diversity officer. So if, if, if there's a diversity team, and especially when there's a communication barrier, if you can have just a help desk so that when people come in, they can ask some questions. I found the same in DMV office. As soon as you enter, you have a help desk, and you go through certain questions. They help you out. And then when you go to the main window, you know what, 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 what you're going to ask. So please let the personal know to be patient. And this, there's going to be a lot of doubts and clarifications. So please. Uh, the second thing I came here is because I volunteered for the green environmental team. Um, we are looking at uh, sustainable. They're looking at making the schools a sustainable Jersey certification. So what I understand, and I, and I think uh, they reached out to Miss Virginia White as well before. Um, some of the schools got some certification and they get a grant. Um, they got a 10K grant and they replaced all the water filters. So the green team is looking at if the schools can register um, and get themselves uh, the sustainable Jersey certification. That is a very progressive idea. A lot of schools have gotten in in New Jersey. It would be wonderful if Edison becomes a green school and you get a green star from the Department of Energy, I think, and it's a big star for our school. So that would be the second thing. The third thing is there are a lot of clubs, after school clubs and programs. Some of them are redundant without any activity. Some of them have activity. Maybe we can progress this year and see what new clubs um, you can open, and what old clubs which don't have any activity, old programs, um, if you can, you know, do an assessment and try to see how to progress to the next year. So we, all the residents are looking forward to the new year and what new progressive ideas you can bring to the table. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Anita. 
I did receive some communication regarding the sustainable uh, building. That's JMI, correct? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be working on that. Other public comment? Ms. Orkin. Hi, Maria Orchid, 83 Jefferson. I'm missing all the wipes and everything. <laughs> Thank you for giving the food for the families in need every Thursday at J.P. Stevens and Edison High. It does make a difference to the community. Thank you. Thank you to all the volunteers that helped with Silver Lake. Please check our website at Beautiful Edison for future volunteer opportunities. Without the volunteers, we can't clean up the parks and the roadside areas in desperate need of help. National Night Out is August 2nd. I hope to see everyone there. There'll be Lake Papiani from 6 p.m. to 10.30. I'm not sure what the movie is, but we'd love to see everyone there. Which one? Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. Oh, that, that's a cute one. <laughs> Middlesex County Fair is August 1st through the 7th. Come and visit with the 4-H Club. You get to learn a lot of different things there. Don't forget your summer reading. <laughs> I think you should meet at a different school every month. This is a beautiful way of seeing the diversity about Edison. I don't mind traveling. I love James Monroe. And I don't think we have been here for quite some time. Thank you for working with the township regarding all the parking. It's, it's been traffic problems. And I know sometimes it's not easy solutions, but thank you. Uh, 988 is the new mental health phone line for anyone that needs to reach out. It's uh, one of those national numbers. I asked also at the township about our crossing guard updates and our ABC after school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Orkin. Ms. Conway? Elizabeth Conway, 20 Netherwood Circle. Um, my question is, we did get a number for uh, the incoming kindergartners at 1,079. Uh, I'd like to know if there's been an increase in the numbers of the upper grades, because I know if I would be sending my kindergartner now to full day kindergarten, am I also sending my second grader a third grader because they were all at a private school to keep them in one building? Are they now moving into the public sector? Because my concern is um, I'm glad that we're getting full day kindergarten and it's been out of our district for 10 years or more. And we didn't build any more classrooms to get full day kindergarten back. What we did was we cut back from what I'm hearing on upper classrooms. So we might have gotten rid of one section of fifth grade or one section of second grade in order to accommodate the additional kindergartners. But my concern is what if those numbers are going up or how are we going to really deal with an additional number in the upper grades? Especially I'm, I'm really concerned about first and second grade, that the numbers stay down, that the kids get what they need in first and second grade without um, overloading the classrooms. And by the overloading, I'm not talking about going over and being overcrowded, but keeping it to a reasonable number in order for the children to get the best education possible. Uh, my second item is um, back to the buses again. Uh, I know we got additional buses and we have 100 routes out of 375. How many routes did we have before out of uh, the 375? So what I'm asking is how many additional routes are we able to handle because we have more buses is my question. Um, next item is my thing 
close to my heart because I was deeply involved with Lincoln uh, Elementary School uh, addition happening. Uh, is there, uh, could you give an update as to the status of the, the building? And are we going to be ready to at least utilize some of it? And the last thing was uh, the Committee of the Whole. You did talk about us, uh, the next meeting being August 23rd. Will there be uh, a Committee of the Whole meeting in the near future? I don't believe there was one in July. Will there be one in, in August? Because there is so much going on in our district, it would be nice uh, to have that additional meeting to hear about. I know we go down to one combined meeting and it's not the best to have considering you were gone for two, over two hours now. It makes it more uh, overwhelming to be honest with you. So if we had that extra meeting, I know nobody likes to go to an extra meeting, but in order to get out the information to at least the people on uh, that can watch it on YouTube or the uh, website to let them know of all the occurrences, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Conway. I'll take the question about the committee of the whole. We will be having a meeting uh, late summer. It's not going to be before the next board meeting. Uh, that's simply um, due to the fact that Dr. Reagan and his team have a lot of homework to do before that next meeting. There's a lot of um, moving parts. Part of that is the bond council and the financial advisor and the appointments that we did tonight to make sure that we have some of the money discussed. And you know, this is just uh, you know some mechanics and nuts and bolts behind the scenes that need to be worked out. Uh, not before the next. It, it might be August, but not before the next board meeting. So it might be late August. I have to figure that out. It's on me to set that. And right now I don't have a plan to set it before the next uh, meeting on the 23rd. But that does not mean work is not being done. It's the board's job is to guide you know, the administration and what they're accomplishing. And I know Dr. Bragan and his team are working hard. So I too look forward to an update. We'll share with you when we can. If you have any specific questions, you could always reach out. Um, regarding Lincoln School, I'll defer to Dr. Bragan. All right. Um, thank you, Mrs. Conway, as always, very insightful questions. Um, the kindergarten numbers are what they are, and we are looking at the other numbers across all the other uh, grades as well, especially first grade and second grade, as well as the upper elementaries. Right now, um, they're lower than what we anticipated, so we feel pretty confident that we're able to cover everything without having larger class sizes than we anticipated. But we're monitoring it. We'll, we'll stay on top of that. So we haven't seen that spike in um, you know, the upper elementary grades as, as that you alluded to. Um, regarding the buses, I don't have an exact number, and one of the reasons is last year a lot of our internal drivers we utilized to fill some of the routes that were dropped and changed. And the year before, we had a lot of um, stunted routes and stuff due to the COVID closures back and forth. Um, I do know our overall routes were around 415 in the past, and we consolidated routes to get that down at 375 just to be more efficient in the routes that we have. So we'll monitor that. I, I, as I said earlier, I anticipated going up more than 100 as we move forward and have more drivers and get more acclimated into doing our own routes. Um, if I was going to guess, Mrs. Conway, I'd say it was between 60 and 70 last year that we did ourselves. But I could get that exact number. I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, and the Lincoln edition is, is progressing nicely. There's a couple of bumps in the road, as people probably are aware, supply chain issues and uh, parts and materials and everything else that you could think of have, have been an issue there. Again, bumps in the road, but it hasn't stopped us from progressing and moving forward. Um, the board had a, a discussion tonight with the architect. One of the issues is about, I mentioned it at our committee of the whole meeting, a switch gear, which I used, used to have no knowledge of what that is, but it's instrumental in bringing the electrical um, uh, power into the building. So there's some delay with that. So we may have to have our power provided in an alternate way, either that's via generator or some other options we pursued. But we're on, still on track to open all the classrooms for September 1st. Right? The gym, as we said, in the multi-purpose room will be a little delayed because the prefabricated steel structure um, was a little behind schedule. So that will be opened after that. You know, We're hoping in a couple of months, but at the latest, that would be Christmas time. So fingers crossed and you know everything's moving forward. Thank you, Dr. Bragan. Other public comment? Yes, miss. Hello, good evening to all the members of the board. Thank you for allowing the public to speak. My name is Rakaya Suleiman of North Edison. 
Could you just move the microphone closer to you? There you go. Is Thank that you. better? Be much better. Thank okay. you. So my name is Rakaya Suleiman of North Edison, and I'd like to thank you for allowing the public to speak, as I stated. Um, I, too, was a parent who was looking for pre-K, so I'm happy to hear that you guys are considering pre-K. You understand and you're aware that it's needed and very necessary. Congratulate you guys on the enrollment numbers of kindergarten. Um, unfortunately, when I moved here, I was part of the struggle with pre-K. My daughter is now going to sixth grade. Um, I also am one of the people who moved here for the Edison School District. Uh, unfortunately, um, I actually see lack of uh, ethnicity diversity here. And from that, we have suffered nothing but, I want to say, abuse from the schools. Um, I do realize that testing uh, is one of the major concerns, and it's why I believe that the school system is, you know, known to be very good. My concerns. Over the past couple of months, I've heard from a number of parents who reached out to me in frustration because of their child needing to attend another year at John Adams Middle School. But no one had yet acknowledged my acceptance of correspondence the last time I was here um, until I reached out via email to you, Dr. Bragan, to address the substance of concerns, um, which were discrimination with invective and eradicate behavior from the principal and the vice principal. I am also happy to hear that you guys are, um, I guess, developing a mental health plan for the children. Um, that's very necessary. I'm sorry. Um, could you please let me know so that I can let the community know why no one has responded um, to constituents, and for those who are still preserving in their efforts to communicate with you, what is the best way for them to do so? Uh, so far as the AC, where are the students who need the AC are, where are they supposed to be placed when they need the AC? Um, I myself have a child who is in need of AC, and I believe that he was told to go into the nurse's office to cool down when there weren't uh, available classrooms for him with AC, and with that, he would miss out on some of his academic learning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Suleiman, did, you spoke at a previous board meeting, didn't you? Yes, I, I did. thought we had a meeting schedule. Did we never get that we schedule? We do not have a meeting schedule. I emailed. Oh, me? You, yes. And I didn't get back to you? You got back to me and stated what you just stated, which is I thought we had a meeting scheduled. And then we didn't schedule it? No. All right. Before you leave tonight, we'll schedule a meeting. If okay. That's okay with you? That is perfectly okay. okay. Thank you. I apologize for that. Thank you. Other public comment? Mr. Manesh, you have 10 seconds. Would you like them? I will take that 10 seconds. All I was trying to say is if you use the same company, what are the chances that we're going to get a referendum passed? Because if you use the same people, remember the name. So please think about it. That's all I said. 10 seconds. Thank you very much. Motion to end public comments. Motion. Mr. Patel, motion, second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Mr. Patel, motion, second. Second. Mr. She, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. It's 1013.